Oh, Gary Bowyer. Oh, Gary Bowyer. How I love you, Gary Bowyer. But I also love Adam Armstrong. Adam Armstrong. Adam Armstrong. Oh, how I love you, Adam Armstrong. Oh, Tony Mowbray. Tony Mowbray. Oh, I, I love you, Tony Mowbray. Oh, I didn't see you there. I got a poem for you. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Portsmouth got one. Blackburn Rovers got two. That's right, folks, back once again with a bit of a match review this time, picking apart the wonderful, victorious Blackburn Rovers win over Portsmouth at Fratton Park. Before we get into the thick of things, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Yes, baby, it looks like the promotion push is back on track, and we'll talk more about the conundrum that's been going on around League One. It's starting to get a little tight at the top of the table. If you can't wait, you can just look at the table on the uh, what's it, right-hand side of your screen, and you can see how close it is at the top of the table. But anyway, yes, Blackburn Rose headed out of Fratton Park to the beach. It was a bit too early in the year to catch some sun, but they got three points, baby. Thanks to two goals from a main man, Stretch Armstrong. That's right, boys and girls. Uh, in fact, Armstrong got up scoring on the 21st minute, and we took a squeaky lead into the halftime break before Mowbray gave his words of wisdom. And once again, though, Pompey came back into the mix, scoring on the 50th minute, by a guy by the name of Chaplin. No, I don't think he's related to the old uh, Charlie, but, uh, but he might do. Uh, but anyway, it was touch and go for a bit, and I didn't think we were going to make it. But in all fairness, I think before kickoff, I would have accepted a point. But uh, Stretch Armstrong had um, other ideas. He wanted to take um, all three and give us Rovers boys, our travelling fans, uh, some uh, much-needed relief and a joyous trip home because he ended up... Back the win on the 87th minute. That's right, folks. And we took away all three points. It wasn't all plain sailing because we did lose uh, young Travis, a substitute, on, uh, in injury time. Uh, so uh, a little bit doom and gloom for that boy. And it was a, it was pretty harsh. I think it was a straight red, pretty nasty tackle. You haven't seen it. Wait till the highlights pop up uh, within the next 12, 24 hours or so. But anyway, let's take a look at the statistics. Rovers dominate possession 53%. Uh, compared to 47% for Portsmouth. Uh, as for shots, Pompey had 14, Rovers had 7, 3 on target for Portsmouth, 4 for Rovers, 2 in the back of the nets, 6 corners for Rovers, 5 for Pompey, and we were the dirty bunch of players. So take a look at the starting 11 here. It's Portsmouth in their uh, Valentine's getup. McGee was in goal, Walks, Burgess, Clark, Donahue, Evans, Close, Thompson, Lowe, Pittman, and the scorer, Chaplin. As for Rovers, they lined up like this. Ryer in goal, Naimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Payne, Bennett, Smallwood, Dak, Samuel, and my new, my, my new favourite player, Stretch Armstrong, with his two goals on the night. Uh, he did score on the weekend also. Uh, to make it uh, three goals in two games. And I know he's got goals in him. I knew it. He just needed to break that hoodoo. And he has done. And now let's hope he can start knocking him in for fun. If you hear any barking in the background, it's the pooch. She's getting a little animated. She's very excited. Because Rovers won, baby. And we're right back into the thick of things. The top of the table hasn't changed in regards to positions. But it's a lot tighter in regards to points. Why? Well, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let's take a look at my ratings for the players. Raya had a 7. Naimbi had a 6. Danning with a 7. Mulgrew with a 7. Williams with a 7. Payne had a 5. Pretty sour game for him. Bennett, Smallwood and Dak all on 7s. Uh, Dominic Samuel has a 6. And my boy Stretch Armstrong has 9. But yes, what a welcome relief after two rough games the game against Plymouth, obviously, that was our last uh, away day. And then this sloppy draw uh, against Oldham. We were in need of a result. It wasn't a spanking. But, um, yeah, it's much, much needed. And uh, especially with results that have been, a ca been happening this past two uh, match days. Obviously, the weekend, Wigan slipped up there. Shrewsbury didn't really take full advantage. Uh, and today, Wigan, once again, I've a bit of a spoiler. They also... Uh, stumble today and it looked at, at one point of the day it looked like uh it was going to be a perfect match today shrewsbury were stumbling a little bit against fleetwood but they're a tough old uh tough old pair of boots the shrewsbury they are sticking around for the long haul in fact they now top the table uh so uh it's it's going to be tough i don't think they have to play each other but i know we still have to play wigan uh at the beginning of march uh, which could be, I'm hoping the situation is a lot more clearer towards the top two. 
by that point because uh, I like that game. I, I didn't want it to count for anything, but I think the way we are going, it's so, I, I, I know I flip flop around a little bit, but hopefully this is the result that kickstarts the, the last chapter of the season. We take on uh, 23rd place Berry uh, next match. Uh, at home and that's uh, on Monday so we have a bit of preparation time for that we do have uh, we don't uh, have any football on the on the weekend so we can see what goes on and maybe we can take advantage of that now you've heard what I've had to say what's the gaffer been saying surely after the final whistle let's take a listen uh, well it's a difficult place to come I think um, especially with them kicking towards the big bank of supporters second half was always going to be difficult we um, they got an equaliser pretty early in the second half so we thought it was going to be backs to the wall when we lost Nyambi through injury as you say, then we had a man sent off, and um, so yeah, for our supporters, really, we've made a long, long trip and won't get back till the early hours. I think it's important. It's important for the team, of course. You can see that that we're trying to build a connection with our supporters, if we can, the football team and the fans. It's important that you know there's been it hasn't been the closest relationship for a few years, and it's it's great to come to places like this and the six seven hundred who made the trip tonight. It, um, it's important for them that they have a good journey home and for us the bigger picture is that we're trying to get out of this division and we need to come to places like this and win. No, listen, it's intimidating to be honest. It's, I've, I've played here, I've, I've managed other teams here, it's, it's a fantastic football arena, it's a, a great credit to the people of Portsmouth who come out and support their team in the adversity that they've had over, over recent years. And um, but. But yeah, listen, great for us, great for our team, great for the spirit of our team, I think, to come here in a difficult environment and get three points. First and foremost, we've got good players. We've got players who care about the club, care about the team. Um, I took a real low-key approach to this game and sort of stood back and let them manage the team to this victory. And um, Because sometimes I can become a bit intense with meetings and fine detail and um, I stepped back a little bit for this and the players took control of it and, and they got the job done at the end of the day and um, I think it's important sometimes to give ownership of a football team to the people who are actually out on the grass doing the job. But, you know, bottom line, I think that's the way we play. We've, we've spent a lot of time, so you know, 32 games in or whatever we are now, you know, 32 games of meetings of talking about how we play on the front foot and press and squeeze and we're in League One and, and with total respect to League One players, if you press them high up, they, invariably they might give you the ball back and um, and we've played like that for a long time now and so they don't need me to keep telling them every game, they know what's what's required and, and they, they did it themselves tonight and got the job done. Well, first and foremost, Danny's... Is he 33, 32, 33? I think it's. Um, we've had an issue. We lost at, P uh, at Plymouth the other week. With the, that was the third game in a week, and um, and Danny played all of them. He scored two in the midweek game and did fantastically well, and yet was pretty ineffective in the third game at that did age. And so it's just just rotation of players that we've got. I think we've got some good players. I think we've got a good squad. Um, add to that a fighting spirit and a togetherness and, and, a, and a hopefully a camaraderie with a support base. Then you've got a chance of being successful. Listen, I've managed Armstrong before. He's got 20 goals for me at Coventry in, in a season. And um, at his best, he's electric. He wants to score goals. He lives for scoring goals. He's fast. He's sharp. He can shoot off both feet. He can play down the middle. He can play number 10. He can play wide left, wide right. And um, yeah, of course, we, we delayed that he scored the goals. It's, it was a bit, a bit of a slow start for him because he was playing out wide left and he's just getting off the bench every now and then. But I thought it was right for a start tonight. Um, Again, with total respect to their defenders, I know Christian Burgess. I signed him for Middlesbrough from from university, and so um, I just think Armstrong's qualities would have given them problems, and and, and, and that was the case. Well, so I know first and foremost, I know Lewis Travis, and uh, I know he's a fully committed footballer who challenges like that for every challenges like that in training. But, um, I, I I have tried to watch it back on on a laptop, but it's a very blurry picture basically I would just say as I said to the fourth official Travis Travis wouldn't go and try and hurt anybody but he is ferocious footballer he, he wants to win every five aside every tackle my hope is when we get a better picture of it that he's going right through the ball and um, and the officials got it wrong if, if if he's one of those where he's caught the top half of the ball and his foot's rolled over with the momentum and caught the boy in the shin then if it's a red card it's a red card and um, I'm sure there'll be nobody more upset than Lewis but um because he's a young boy who's coming through the 23s and been given an opportunity, and um, you know it's sad for him really if it if it's the sending off. But I, I do know that he hasn't got the malice in his heart. He's um, 
he's a good, honest footballer, professional, trying to make his way in the game, and, and he's just showing his commitment by his enthusiasm. And so, if it's red, it's red. But but it wouldn't be no malice in there. I said, we've got some, we've got some big players in there. With, with again with with total respect, I think you know Mulgrew scored 12 goals from centre half. You know Graham was on the pitch by then. Um, Elliot Bennett's been around a long time. We've got some we've got some good footballers who can Derek Williams who can get the job done and. Um, Delighted for them, great that Darren Lenahan came back as well today, been out since the opening day of the season against South End and uh, his first first team football. Um, worked really hard to get back and delighted he shows his power and his strength and he'll only strengthen us as we move forward. Yep, yeah, I think I think the concern was that he was coughing up blood and um, and he got smashed in the chest by, by his own goalkeeper, I think. But um, and so obviously there was concern about lungs and punctured lungs, etc. It turns out on further examination he's actually bit the back of his tongue and his, the blood was from the tongue, not from the internal organs. And so whilst he's got a really sore chest at the moment and he's in a little bit of pain, he's, uh, there's no real damage that should keep him out other than a bit through his tongue. No, I don't think so. I think their, their club doctor, just before I came out, their club doctor was having a look at him, I think, and whether they think he needed to go to hospital, but I, I don't think so. I think he'd be fine. As I say, as I say, as we've had some draws and teams have won around us, it's it, we have to look after ourselves, really. You know, we've lost I don't know two in 22. I think it's uh, we have to focus on the last 14 games of this season. Um, we just focus on the next one. It's 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 Monday um, against Bury at home, an opportunity for us against the team at the bottom of the table. And yet those are the real banana skins when you don't focus and concentrate. And so. Each game at a time, I know it's a nasty little cliche for you, but we just have to focus. Our aim, our only aim is to get out of this division, hopefully by finishing in the top two. A massive credit to Shrewsbury again, who won, away, uh, won tonight again, and um, we're going to have been fantastic all season. We just have to keep going, keep competing, keep believing that we're going to win enough football matches and um, and see where we finish at the end. Well, that cheeky little mayor, isn't he? The old Tony Mowbray. Uh, what the fans been saying and the players on social media. Take a little look right now. Adam Armstrong, first at the blocks. Massive three points tonight. Happy to grab two goals. Safe travels to Rose fans. Great support tonight. Onwards and upwards. Jack Payne, great win that tonight. Great support as well from the fans. Again, Darrell Lenehan, who returned to the Rovers lineup. He was actually on the substitute Spence, but he came on for injured Naimbi, and he was a rock at the back. Glad to see him back. But he also said, fantastic support from the fans tonight. Huge respect for you, all making such a journey on a Tuesday night. Unbelievable following. Uh, this, is, this is Elliot Bennett from Rovers tonight. Glad we could send you home with three points. Buzzing for Adam Armstrong. Uh, we uh, well-deserved braced. So, safe travels. Also off the pitch, Harry Chapman refreshing Rovers Twitter until this popped up. Great win. Adam Armstrong on flames again. Meanwhile, ex-Rovers player and coach. Great result, though. A tough place to go, Fratton Park. Rovers, well done to the, all the travelling fans making the effort. Just about warmed up after witnessing another good result for Accurton Stanley. Uh, meanwhile, Ryan Nayimbi, great win today. Rovers travelling fans were amazing. Safe travels back home. Adam Armstrong on flames. And then Adam Armstrong gives him a big old thumbs up. Meanwhile, some of the fans have been tweeting. What a way to win a football match. Even more so with Wigan losing. You blues. Rovers tweet said this, geez, that extra time was tough. Shame Shrewsbury won, but did what we have to keep doing. Meanwhile, Chris Underwood, touch of class by Bennett, applauding us Pompey fans tonight. Good luck for you for the rest of the season, mate. Uh, uh, meanwhile, Andrew Ferguson, great win and even got a Bennett shirt at full time. Well worth the trip. And Elliot Bennett respond. Glad the little man is happy. Thanks for the support. Big thumbs up. Meanwhile, the gaffer said this, full time Wigan nil, Blackpool two. And a picture of uh, our old buddy Gary Bowyer. So that's right, Amy Prescott said this. Thank you, Gary Bowyer, with love eyes, as, as did Emma. Agent Bowyer doing the business at the DW tonight. Yes, big respect to old gaffer, Gary Bowyer. We all love you and hope you do well. I hope you, hopefully you survive down the bottom of the table. Uh, so keep doing what you're doing, but uh, also save us some three points when we play you uh, in a few weeks' time. Meanwhile, fair play to Blackburn. We were all over you, but you didn't take our, but didn't take our chances. Your defensive keeper looks so dodgy, apart from Mulgrew, who is quality. Attacking-wise, very good. Luckily, luck is what you need to get promoted, and that's exactly what you're getting. Fair play to Elliot Bennett. Applauding our fans when he when we applauded Naeem B off the pitch, too. Hope that his injury isn't too bad. Decent fans as well for a Tuesday night. Good luck for the rest of the season. Should get promoted. I hope so. Meanwhile, Callum Harkness said this. That's why we do it on a Tuesday night. Adam Armstrong, baby. 
Adam Armstrong, wow. Meanwhile, Joe Adams, yet again, incredible support by the mighty Blackburn Rovers. Over 800 Rovers fans making the hard, long journey down to Portsmouth on a Tuesday night. Fingers crossed for four or three points. I think that was a tweet or a post before kickoff. Meanwhile, fantastic result for us tonight. Looks like Wigan are bottling it. That was Terry Andrews on Facebook. Stuart Franklin said this, short and sweet. Big three points that against a tough team. Meanwhile, Will Cadden said this. OK, people forget Wigan was running away with the league. Even with stupid draws far too many times, we was once 15 points behind. Not now, are we? And he has a couple of laughs. Emojis. Meanwhile, Ryan McKenzie. Uh, that was a hard-fought game. Huge three points from a well-set-up Pompey team. Raya had some shocking moments tonight. Looked very nervous and battled into Naeem be forcing him off. Hope he's okay. Armstrong was lively up front. Samuel, useless. All in all, can't complain. Massive win and a great turnout by the Rovers fans. So let's take a look around the grounds, baby. As you look top left, Wigan stumbled to the second successive defeat. Uh, maybe, just maybe, they're having a little bit of a problem. Also highlighted, Fleetwood uh, could not beat Shrewsbury. Unlucky. They had them on the ropes for a little bit, but then Shrewsbury turned it around. And kept their promotion push going. Got to keep an eye on these boys. Scumthorpe uh, dropping some points away to Peterborough. Also not highlighted are the informed Red Hot Rotherham. They are now right on our, well, I wouldn't say right on our tails, but they are in fourth place now. Uh, they're starting to break away from the, uh, from the, the sixth spot cut off. Uh, and they could be our biggest threats from outside the top three. Let's take a look at some of our Rovers, baby, around the grounds as well. Let's take a look at Scott Wharton. He made his full debut for Lincoln City. Kept a clean sheet. That was in League Two. And uh, a big tweet by Lincoln City. Home and full debut for Scott Wharton tonight. Imps as one. Fair play to Scotty Boy. And uh, congratulations to Lincoln with the three points. As for Rochdale with Sam Hart. Didn't make the start alone. He was on the bench, but no action for him. They lost 3-2 to Bristol Rowers. And our favourite team maker, uh, Elliot Ward, was not on the pitch for MK Dons as they lost 1-0 to Oldham. He was on the bench, but no game time for him. Oh, you cheeky buggers. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date. With all things Blackburn Rovers, I'm now getting myself all tarted up. The wife and I are going to go out for a cheeky meal. That's right, because it is Valentine's Day. So I hope you all are having a good Valentine's Day with your, with another half. Or if you're a single lad or lass out on the pool. Or even if you're taking it easy with a box of popcorn and some movies. Just take it easy. Have a good day yesterday, uh, tomorrow or today, whatever it is, on the old Valentine's Day. Oh, that was a massive result for Rovers. I am chuffed to bits. Also, before I get out of here, I want to say a big thanks to the BRFC forum if you haven't checked out the forum make sure you do so uh, it's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow rover fans just like you and just like me um i also i'm also on twitter and facebook if you want to check me out on the go but yes much needed uh result at a much needed time keeping up the pace with shrewsbury i'm now taking advantage of wigan's failures the past two matches hopefully it'll count for something if not well, it's just going to make it a long old season in the playoffs. Um, I think this weekend, I'm not too sure what's going on. I think we're going to win the FA Cup. Shrewsbury might be in League One action. So we'll take a little look in the preview video for the Berry game, which will be around about 48 hours. Probably Wednesday, uh, probably Thursday, it'll be online. So check that bad boy out when it comes out. We'll talk more about the Berry match and all the permutations and things like that. But anyway, i got to get going. Going on the night, on the Raz. See you later. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.